What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and today's episode is titled Martial Arts Tests, Pass, Fail, and Aftermath. Aftermath. I almost used the wrong word there. Thank you. What are we talking about? Well, it's based on a listener question, so hang around. We'll get there. If you're new to the show, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is where you go for everything related to the show. Whistlekick.com is where you go for everything related to everything. It's our online home. It's where we've got the store where you can get stuff like mugs and sweatshirts and tees at 15% off using the code PODCAST15. It's one of the ways you can support us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. If you want to support us in another way, well, we've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Tiers starting at $2 a month. Just $2 a month, and you get to know upcoming guests and a whole bunch of other behind-the-scenes stuff that goes up from there, and we deliver great value, and people very rarely stop their Patreon contributions, which tells us we're doing something right. Yeah, $2 a month is like $0.25 cents an episode, roughly. Yeah. Do you think we give them $0.25 cents worth of I value hope. per if, episode? If they're still listening right now, I would hope that they feel it's worth $0.25. Cents. Listening to that question alone is probably worth $0.25. Cents. Well, yeah, it could be. <laughs> if you want the entire list, because there's so many things that we do and that you can involve yourself in that supports us, whistlekick.com slash family. We throw in bonus content there. It's kind of like a mini Patreon. It's not linked anywhere. You got to type it in, but we change it weekly. So check it out, whistlekick.com slash family. <sighs> yes. This is a tough topic. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is the type of stuff. So I shouldn't say that the topic is necessarily tough. The question that I received that led to the topic was tough. Now, we're, we're not going to name the name. No. We're not going to read the whole email. But there was a stretch that I want you to read. But before you do, this is the stuff that drives me insane. This is the stuff that makes me angry and sad. And it's the reason that we do a lot of the things that we do. Because my hope is if we can have even a slight influence on the martial arts industry to be more positive mm -hmm. and, I don't know, less sucky than more people participate in martial arts, remain in martial arts, martial arts grows, and that's yeah. our goal. Yeah, I, I would agree. So we, you did receive this question, uh, this email from a guest, yeah. uh, not a guest, listener, from a listener, um, and they had an idea for a Thursday show, and it's, I think this is a good episode for us to have. And the portion that I wanted to read here um, it says this. Last night, I was told to sit very early in my grading after my footwork was wrong on some blocks. Afterwards, my instructor didn't speak to me or look me in the eye and has said nothing to me since. And it's that back half mm. that really frustrates me. Now, obviously, there's more, and I wrote back and forth. Like, there, there was more to this. Yeah. And the reason we're not doing the whole thing is because then it becomes much more easily identifiable. And it's not important for the story. And, and, and it's, re it's really not. But what, what we're talking about here is clearly a different expectation between teacher and student. Yeah. yeah. Not only of performance, but of response. Mm -hmm. Now, an important element here, because people say, well, you know, if you're testing for what? This was a yellow belt test. Green belt test. I mean, it was it was like I don't remember. It was a very early test. Uh, this person has been training at this school a short period of time. I have witnessed people fail tests. It is uncommon. Mm -hmm. Most now now I understand every school has a slightly different culture around testing mm -hmm. and when someone is tested. I, I know of some schools where they test on regular intervals. Mm -hmm. And at many of them, it is much more common for someone to not pass because they were told, you are ready to test. It's something yeah. that most, if not all, students do. In this particular one, that was not my understanding. The schools that I grew up in, that's not how we did things. Mm -hmm. it was, you tested when you were told you were ready. And the way my original instructors framed it to me, we invite you to test when we know you're ready. You pass when you know you're ready. Mm, interesting. Which I, I really like that. I, right? I like that too. The purpose yeah. of the test then is really to see, are you going to live up to the standards that we know you are capable of? 
Yeah. Yeah. In the couple examples I can think of over the years where someone failed a test, it has almost always been because they quit. Hmm. They stopped trying. I'm thinking yeah. the most recent one, and this was years ago. Jeez, we're going back to 2012. Actually, you mentioned a, 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 a Facebook memory that popped up, and I said, what was the one from yesterday? I think it was this one. Oh, it was me doing a form and a test, and someone stopped. Mm-hmm. Not not in my group, but there was somebody at, attending that test, testing, and they they stopped. It was on them. Yeah. Um, there could be longer conversation around those specifics, but I'm not used to someone being told, you know what? You go sit. I've also never, never seen that in, in all the tests I've been to. I consider myself a pretty good um, student of human behavior. It's something I've gotten a lot better at doing this show. I've had to learn how to interview and, and one of the things that is required in being a skilled interviewer is understanding people, learning how people are and, and, all, and such. The fact that the instructor, after having the person sit, did not make eye contact with them hmm. suggests some kind of negative introspection. Embarrassed <clears throat> that they had failed their student. Yep. Anger at something, um, something else, right? Like if, if you're, if I'm not going to make eye contact with you, Andrew, you know, you, your stances are crap, go sit. Yeah, yeah. And I don't look at you from then on. I'm not feeling any kind of empathy Yeah, it, for it, you. Like it's, it's about stomach. me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's about me at that point. And that's what I don't like in this. Yeah. I think it could have been handled so much better. And so this broader, or this this specific example leads to the broader subject of how should tests go? Yeah. What should happen? Now, one of the things we'll get out of the way quickly, because when we were reviewing what we wanted to talk about, we have talked about testing a little bit. I have a very simple rule of of testing. Nothing should be tested that is not part of training. Mm -hmm. The, 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 bit, the example that I use, and this will probably offend some of you, I don't care. If you expect someone to pass certain fitness standards and you don't implement that fitness training as part of your class time, it suggests that it's not important. Yeah. As an example, like you have to run an eight minute mile or whatever, run, run three miles in, you know, 20 minutes. And, and as a class, you've never run. Yeah. Running around your, your facility a couple of times does not count. Now, that could be slightly modified if your school assigns homework. Yeah. I expect you to run two miles this week. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. There, there are ways around that yeah, yeah. because uh, the, the, the major pushback on that would be, well, we don't have time to do everything. It's true. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's still a way to hold people accountable and instruct them in what is important to you. Yeah. Okay. The threshold. You have reached a standard. Mm-hmm. The most important things in the test should be trained the most. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, it it, it, it would not make sense that we did this one technique one time and now it's 50% of the test. Like that would be ridiculous. Yeah. It's insane. So that, that's a side, like I know you and I are on the same page about that. When we put out, I don't know if it was a specific episode, but it came up in something and I don't remember any pushback. So I'm going to assume that the majority of people are on board, at least conceptually with that. We already established that schools run testings very differently. Some schools run testings really rough. Mm -hmm. My first black belt test was rough. It was challenging. Yeah. It was physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually taxing. I remember it in in vivid detail to this day. That was the goal. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've been part of tests that were not like that. But every test I've ever been to or part of was positive. 
Now, it, maybe it wasn't rah, 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 cheering people on. Maybe you had to remain quiet on the side. Yeah, yeah. But people were rooting for the people testing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There was encouragement. Yeah, there was this culture Even of wanting them to pass. Everybody wanted the people there to pass. Yeah. And what I'm hearing was in, in this email. Now, granted, I'm reading my own stuff in this email. I wasn't there. there. Yeah. This wasn't even a phone conversation. But what I'm getting is that's not what this was. Yeah. Because I've witnessed many, many tests. And in low rank tests, it is not uncommon. In fact, I'd call it quite common. In fact, it, the testing I was recently at with, with you guys, mm -hmm. there was corrections done on the floor. Yep. Uh, make this modification. Because guess what? There's a lot to know. Yeah. 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 And sometimes people are nervous. Absolutely. And I would assume we want to create a culture where people are not afraid of their mistakes. Exactly. Because what happens when people are afraid of making mistakes, Andrew? Well, they just stop doing it. They don't try. Yeah. They, they're just done. They give up. If there is a more severe response to getting something wrong than to not doing it all, they will not do it all. Yep. You are conditioning. How we show up in our training how we show up as students, as instructors, et cetera, conditions the people around us in how we want them to act towards us. Mm -hmm. If you are an instructor and people get more guff because they did something wrong, then when they are not there, you're training them to not show up. Yeah, it's a good point. And I think for a lot of schools that can't grow, this is what you're doing wrong. Yeah. Now, yeah, this is a whole other topic we could go into, so I want to corral this to testing. But yes, there are ways where you correct people and you are, hold a firm standard and you can still be positive and encouraging. And it doesn't have to be like, you're doing great even though your stances suck, right? It doesn't have to be that. There are ways to do this. Yeah. You've seen a lot of tests. Yep. Have you ever seen an instructor fail someone and then... Give them the silent treatment? No. And and let's be clear. We this this message that came in didn't come in yesterday. Nope. Um, we it's we like a month ago. We have no idea what's transpired after the test till today. Um, but the answer is no. I've also never seen in the middle of a test an instructor sit somebody down and fail them in the middle of their test. Um, the handful of failures I have seen. The test has happened, and it was when all was said and done, people were called up to receive their rank, and this person just wasn't called up. Because the person's there, theoretically, they're prepared. I have always been taught that if your instructor is asking you to test, you are ready to test. Mm -hmm. That he's he or she is not going to have you be up there if you're not ready. Right. And so, as an instructor... I would want to know what else are they getting right? What are they getting wrong? Yeah. I would want to give them a full report, even if I'm going to fail them. Even if they screw up so badly in the first five minutes. Yep. I want to be able to give them a full report. Say, so you know what? Everything was great except for this thing over here that's a deal breaker. Yep. And I, I, oh, I was rooting for you. And I know you'll come back and crush it next time. And if there are 10 things, and I'm just... Sure. Picking numbers out of the air, right? If there's 10 things that the students have to know for their test and the 10th thing they get wrong, but they had the first nine right, okay, you as, per, as the instructor have to determine whether mm -hmm. to pass or fail them, right? But if the first thing they do is wrong and you sit them down and you don't even watch things two through 10. Was it 0% or 90%? Yeah, like you have no idea. You know, and and I think that's the thing that that gets me the most. You ever been perfect at a test? <laughs> Gosh, no. You ever seen anyone perfect at a test? No, me either. I mean, my last test, of my that you were at, you did fine. No, I, it was so <laughs> bad. My wife videotaped the whole thing. It was, How many it, times have you watched it and kicked yourself? Once, and I refused to watch it again. He did great. No, it was he horrible. really no, he really did. <laughs> he crap. Really um, but but my point is. I didn't stop, right? I made a mistake. And, and let's be clear, with the exception of one mistake I made that my instructor would have no idea that I made the mistake, 
every other mistake I made, he knows. He knows how I made that mistake. But I kept going, right? You were nervous. You'd already been training. All day, yeah. There was a bunch of other stuff going on. And it was a surprise. Yeah. So, but the thing is, he wouldn't have asked me to test if he didn't think I was ready or, and, and prepared for it. So, the... I've been involved in drumming organizations at a high level mm -hmm. where we will have, I had a student come to me and say, Hey, you know what? I really want to play in your group. And I tell them, I don't know. Like <clears throat> it's up here and you're not quite there. Like I'm happy to work with you. Mm -hmm. And so they would start to come to practice and on a weekly, bi-weekly basis, we would get together for a private lesson and I would let them know this is what you're doing well. This is in order to make it because we were going to the world championships in August mm. and they wanted to be able to play with the band in August. And I said, all right, right now you're not ready. If the world championships were tomorrow, you would not play with us. This is what you need to do to work on in order to get there. And then a couple weeks would go by and I would say, all right, this is good. You're doing good. Like this is what you need to work on. But that constant feedback, yeah. because what's the alternative? I just tell them they're not good enough and then they go away. Well, I want them there. I want as many you people want as them possible. to get better. I want them to get better. As a, as a teacher, I think that theoretically yeah. is the goal is you want everyone to keep getting exactly. better. Exactly. And, and selfishly in this scenario, I want them to play in the band because it'll make, if they're good enough, it'll make the band better, right? Um, you don't necessarily have that within the martial arts context. But as an instructor, I want my students to stick around mm -hmm. and I want them to get better. So by essentially snubbing and ostracizing them, yeah. you're doing the exact opposite. Yeah. It's as simple for me as if you want people to show up, if you want people to get better, if you want martial arts to grow in your own little circle or globally, you have to create a culture where that is encouraged. Yep. And we all know what makes people respond. And there's a difference between negative reinforcement and ostracization. Yeah. And that, that the latter is, is what we're talking about here. So if, if I was to speak to the instructor that I don't know, I, I don't know this instructor, even though I, I know a little bit about the person who wrote in, I don't know the instructor. If I was to speak to that instructor, I would say, okay, clearly you have some stuff you have to work on in your personal life. Something clearly major and i know a little bit on the subject because there was more context added in i think i that, gave you the whole thing nope oh i didn't and that's oh, okay that's fine yeah. so there was a response we've added a few messages there was some more context and i was right there was stuff going on in that person's life yeah and they took it out on their student yeah and, that's and that saying. really ticked me off but that doesn't mean it's too late it's never yeah. too late to apologize it's never too late to make it right i was at the gym on sunday lifting weights and I was having a rough day. And the short of it is, I said something to someone. I asked someone, I said, hey, can you turn down your music? Because they were playing their music on their phone. And I had my earbuds in. And it was music I liked. But I was listening to my stuff. Yeah. And I was like, hey, can you turn, do you have earbuds? And he's like, no. And I was like, am I turning it down? And he's like, yeah, not a problem. And I was like, you know what? Wait a second. The gym has speakers. It's totally fine. I've put my own music on. I am obviously just taking my emotions out on them. Mm -hmm. Even if they're willing, even if yeah, they're yeah. accepting, I was like, no, nope, you know what? I'm sorry. I've screwed up in this moment. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Please don't. Let me turn my music up in my headphones a little bit. Yeah. Because then we both hear what we want. And we actually had like a reverse argument for a couple minutes. Where he's like, no, no, it's fine. I'm like, no, no, it's not fine. I'm wrong. Yeah. And it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong because yeah. that's how we learn. And so in this context, this student is probably never going to get that footwork wrong again. Yeah, that's true. But they may also never train again. Yeah. They may also be terrified of ever testing in the future. Yeah. They might now have issues with martial arts, that person, um, events that are pressured. They may never feel prepared. Yeah. There and are so many psychologically damaging things that were unavoidable 
as potential elements here. And the fact that it happened at a test at, a, at an er, a at a time in this person's training that's early on, and b so early in the test. You know, I mean, I've only been involved with one organization that had an instant fail for a test, and it was during sparring. If you drew blood during sparring, if you punched somebody hard enough that they drew blood, you automatically failed. That, that was one particular school. And everyone knew that. Oh, absolutely. You and went so, into it knowing. And, and while I will accept that there are elements of testing that are incredibly subjective, uh, and, and to the point where I, I can watch people and like, yeah, that person is of this rank. Like you can tell, like sure. you can tell, like there's so much subjective element to martial arts, but anything that would constitute an automatic failure should be codified and public. Yep. If there is one thing I can do to screw up, like drawing blood and sparring or yep. my feet not being right or something similar, it should be written down and everyone should know about it ahead of time so they can give it the proof. <clears throat> because theoretically, if it's an automatic fail, it is a absolutely critical element for safety yep. or for progress or whatever. And if it's that critical, everyone should know about it ahead of time so they can treat it yeah. appropriately. And it was on a black belt test. This was as at the black belt level. You should be able to spar. At this school, the thought was you should be able to spar with enough control to not drop blood. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. But that's at someone's career who has been in the martial arts for a long time. Mm -hmm. To have something so early in this person's career is so can be so detrimental for their continuing to want to train. It's really sad. Now, obviously we're not talking to the person who messed up the, the instructor. The instructor is the one who messed up here, not the yeah. student in my, in my mind. Um, I'm, I'm assuming the student will hear this and we'll probably have some feedback. And I, and I hope so. I'd like to get some more context for what has transpired since um, I think it's been about a month. So there's probably been some more information that, that I would love to know that I'm not going to share with all of you. But we're really doing this episode not for that one person, but for all of you. And what's the goal of doing that episode? The goal of doing that uh, this episode is that you think, like all of our episodes, we want you to think. And so specifically, if you are a student and you are coming up for testing, this may create some questions that maybe you're not comfortable bringing to your instructor, but to a higher rank, someone who's sure. been through that test. One of my favorite questions to ask is, what don't I know that I don't know? Mm. Yeah, this might be a good example. Sometimes people don't know how to answer that question. And so I will flip it around like this. How might I mess up and not be aware ahead of time that I'm messing up? Yeah. Oh, when you're sparring, if you're going to hit someone, make sure that you're, you're not, you know, that your fingernails are cut and you're not drawing blood. And, yep, yep. you know, when you punch to the face, make sure you've got enough control that you're not splitting lips. Okay. That makes sense. instructors if you have a school if you have been around a while you probably have a rough format for a test in mind it's okay to tell them yeah it's okay to give them an idea of what's expected now if there are things that you're not going to tell them tell them you're not going to tell them there will be things that we don't tell you we don't know how long the test is going to be but we need you here at this time ready to go at this time yeah and the test will run until we are done which could be as late as this time. Sure. Remember why. Why do you do this? Why why do we test? And why do we have martial arts tests? Oh, that's a deep subject. Maybe it's, the topic maybe, maybe it's an episode topic. Yeah. Um, I have always felt one of the reasons we test is to push people into a place where they feel slightly uncomfortable because that's how it's going to be in the quote real world if they get attacked, which God forbid never happens, but it's not going to be rehearsed. And so tests aren't typically rehearsed. You know, you are asked to get up there and do your thing. And that's, that's what you do. And it's going to put you under a little bit of pressure and you're going to react a certain way. For, for me, it's, it's, it's that, but a little more simply it's evaluation under pressure. Yeah, because some of us perform better under pressure, some of us don't, and it's it's a check and balance. Where are you? How has your investment in time, effort, 
translated into knowledge. Are you able to perform? Mm -hmm. Are you able to do these things that we expect you to do? And if the answer is no, then I consider that in most, not all, most maybe, yeah, not just many, but most cases to be a mutual failure. Your job yeah. as, a, as a student is to learn. Yeah, yeah. And if you are not learning, it is your responsibility to find a way to learn. Mm -hmm. Your job as an instructor is to teach, to convey information, to help them learn. You can't cram it into their brain. No. But if what you're doing is not landing properly, you should have different methods at your disposal to convey that information. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a check and balance. Testing is a check and balance of those relationships between the teacher and student. I hope we get feedback. Yeah. I hope people have opinions. I hope they will leave them in the Facebook group, mm -hmm. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio behind the scenes. You could leave them as comments on our website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to share them privately, you could email Andrew or I, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Don't forget, we've got our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Starts low as two bucks. You can move up. We've got different tiers, different prices. We give you back different things of different value at those different tiers. Whistlekick.com slash family for all the things you can do to support us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain. Social media is at Whistlekick. Uh, yeah, everywhere. Podcast 1-5 to save stuff at Whistlekick.com. I think that's it. That's good. Let's say it all together. Okay. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have a great day. day.